all right welcome back everyone for another video so last week i had did my very first study with me video and that was actually quite no that was actually quite relaxing okay i actually quite enjoyed that so i will be trying to get more of those into the future at least once a month um because like I said, I really liked it. Next month, I will probably do a write with me where I am just obviously writing. Um, and you guys can write whatever you guys want. Um, you guys can write your story, you can write a poem, you can write whatever you want. The idea is just like the study with me, is I am just writing. Now, right now, I'm currently working on a, uh, a new a new story that I'm trying to actually make Christian so that's the reason why I wanted to do a write with me session next month um, and then I also want to do a read with me where I am literally just kind of lounging here I'll have like a I bought this really nice new candle um, here I'll actually show it to you guys bought this really nice candle it is amber lotus and santal uh, essential oils burns up to 45 hours three wicks it is it's really nice and it smells heavenly um, it's a florential rose scent uh, that uh, it begins with Italian mandarin and lotus flowers um, so it, it smells gorgeous. Now the main reason why I bought this is because it is cruelty free, it's natural rocks blend, it's a natural wig, it's free of sulfate, uh, phthalate, paraben, and dye free, so it's completely natural and healthy and everything. So probably what I'll do is like, I'll, like I said, I'll probably light this, I'll turn off the lights, I'll make it a little dark, I'll put on some fire noises, um, and I will just read, okay, um, I'll have, I'll probably have my, my little, uh, my little, uh, my little light here, oh my god, I cannot talk, I can't even think, uh, this little light here, see, I'll probably have this on so I can actually see, but I want to make it as calming and relaxing and soothing as I possibly can and just lounge here and read. And that's kind of my goal is to, is, is to do a read with me. Uh, more than likely, I will probably still end up reading the Bible because I'm trying to spend more time reading this and diving into the Bible and whatnot, but the, the point, what I'm reading is not the point, okay? The point is to just dive into a reading session and read whatever you want, okay? So you can read something completely fictional, you can read something on your tablet, you can read something on your phone, um, preferably reading something actual, a physical, like an actual physical book. It's a lot different than um, reading something on like your phone or your tablet okay it's different it kind of throws off the the mood of the study especially what I'm trying to convey but what I do is different than what you do my point is without going too much of a tangent is I am trying to set a mood for my writing for my reading and my writing but that's what I want to do like that last week I really enjoyed the whole sitting aside one hour of just listening to ambient noises and just studying or whatever the case is um, and I, I really like to write I really do I love to read as well so I think doing a write with me and a uh, read with me video would also be super awesome so sometime I'm going to try and schedule that into sometime next month uh, either the write one or the read I haven't fully decided which one I'm going to do yet. Probably the right. I'll probably do a right with me next month. But anyways. So today, like I said, we are going into Matthew 5.2. Which just basically means I'm doing the second half of Matthew chapter 5. 
Now, if you guys had saw my video last week, you guys would know I took quite a bit of notes on the first half of Matthew. Uh, so like here, so I'll show you guys again. Okay, so this is my notes from chapter five, from the very first half. Okay, those are my notes. Those are all my notes for up until the end of, I think I read down to verse 26. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna be reading uh, chapter verse 27 down to the rest of the end, the end of the chapter. But here is my notes for the rest of chapter five. Just the page right here. Okay, so luckily I don't have a tremendous amount of notes. Um, the back page of this is actually gonna be used for chapter six. Which, chapters 20, chapter 6 and chapter 7 are still continuation for Sermon on the Mountain. So more than likely, chapter 6 and 7 are going to be in two parts. But I can't say that for sure considering I'm looking at chapter 6 right now and there's only 34 verses. But chapter 7 has a lot as well. has a lot of verses. It has um, 29. Well... Maybe. Okay, I, I, I will just have to see, okay? I will have to go do these chapters and see if I can get them into one video or if I'm going to be doing it in two videos. Point is, I'm going to go ahead and start reading from, from verse 26, and I'll read to the end of the chapter, and then I will go ahead and um, uh, go into my notes and everything. I do have a reflection. Okay, so I will read that reflection for you guys so you guys can get an idea of what is being said for that, and then that would be it. Okay. Alright, so without further ado, let's go ahead and start reading. And again, I'm reading from the ESV version, and I'm starting off at, cha at, at verse 27. Okay. Alright, so we're starting off with the lust. Okay. So it says here, you have heard heard it was said, you shall not commit uh, commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away for it is better that you lose one of your members than your um than that your whole body go into hell it was also said whoever divorces his wife let him give her a certificate of divorce but i say to you that everyone who divorces his wife except on the grounds of sexual immorality makes her commit adultery and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery again you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simple, simply yes or no. Anything more than that, more than this, comes from evil. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the all, the other also. And if anyone also, and if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard it heard that it was said, You shall love your you love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust for if you love those who love you what rewards do you have do not even tax collectors do the same and if you if you greet only your brothers what more are you doing than others do not even the gentiles do the same 
You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now the uh, reflection. The reflection is called Jesus and the Law. It was written by Mary Beth McGreevy and it's based on, it's centered around uh, verses 17 through 18, which is uh, the Christ that came to fulfill the law. I should have read this in my last one, uh, in the, uh, the last video, but because normally I read these at the end of the chapter, I didn't get to it. So now that I've read the entire chapter, I'm going to uh, briefly read the 17 through uh, 20 verses, and then I'm going to read the reflection says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law, until all is accomplished. Sorry. Therefore, whoever, reflect, whoever relaxes one of the, of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and reaches, uh, teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now this, like I said, this reflection is based around that little paragraph. And like I said, normally I would read this at the end of the chapter, but because I'm doing this in two parts, it kind of got mixed up. So it says, Jesus was constantly being criticized by the religious authorities for not relating to the law as they thought he should. This was especially true when it came to his handling of the Sabbath, when he was known to perform healings or to allow his disciples to pick grain. Which apparently that is in Mark 3, 1 through 6 and Matthew 12, 2. Which I have not gotten to the part yet. Uh, it says, Jesus explained that far from doing away with the law and the prophets that is the entire old testament he has come to fulfill them he fulfilled the moral law by his perfect obedience to it the prophecies in the specific predictions of the life of the messiah and the sacrificial system by his sub uh substitutionary atonement much of what happened in Israel's history pictured his life and the wisdom literature described his character. All of the Old Testament pointed to him. Rather than abolishing the law, Jesus confirms the Bible's authority. Not the smallest letter, the iota in Greek or the yoda in Hebrew, and I'm probably saying this wrong, uh, will pass away until all of it is accomplished. Much has already been accomplished through Jesus' earthly de life, death, and resurrection. One day he will come again for the consummation of all things that had been foretold. For this reason, we can understand why he holds accountable anyone who does not obey the law or teach it as relevant and authoritative. The standard that Jesus places upon his hearers is shocking. If we would enter the kingdom of heaven, our righteousness must exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees, who are known for the strict outward observance of the smallest details of the law. But that is just the problem. Their hearts did not conform to their outward profession and PIT, and it has a reference to 2323. They ignored the law's intent to promote justice, mercy, and faithfulness as they said scrupulously followed this minuta what they need was a new heart god provided this new heart when he brings believers to spiritual life through faith in jesus christ this regeneration not only imputes jesus perfect obedience to the law to our account to give us right standing before god it also provides the mot motivation and power to obey to obey and serve him now we as believers find ourselves actually obeying God's word. We do not take credit for it as the Pharisees did. No, we recognize that all the glory goes to God by whom we attain true righteousness and by whose power alone we can obey in any measure. The law now becomes to becomes for us 
not not restrictions that condemn, but the revelation of God's character and gracious work in redeeming of people who love and serve Him by His enabling power. I really like that. That's that. Yeah. Oh, I, I love reading those reflections. All right. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on into uh, the actual notes now. Okay, so we read, started off with the lust. Okay. I don't have a theme for Okay. Alright, so the first thing I want to point out is it says, You have heard that it is said. Okay, so basically, um, he's, he, Jesus is dealing with what, he's, what he heard about adultery and it being wrong. Okay, so he says, You shall not commit adultery which that is the Old Testament commandment. And now Jesus is saying, and if you, if you notice so far, and I've kind of underlined this, is every single time he goes into one of these new things, he says, but I say to you, but I say to you. Okay, and I, I pointed out uh, in the last one, uh, when he says that, but I say to you, it is his way of showing authority. He is literally showing authority over what is being said. He is saying, hey, this is what you heard. This is what, you, what you've grown up knowing, but this is what I say to you. Okay, and he's showing the authority over what was said in the past and what is being said now. Okay, um, so, for, so he says, um, originally it was said you shall not commit adultery, but now he's saying... But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if you are just kind of a woman passing by and you see her and you're looking at her with lustful intent, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. Okay. Um, and then he goes on and says, If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. If your right hand causes you sin, cut it off and throw it away because it's better to lose one member than to have your whole entire body thrown into hell. Okay, um, so basically he's trying to put an end to, um, personal vengeance, personal sins reason, and that's, it's basically he's trying to put an end to lust, okay? Uh, and that this is the reasoning for it. Now, just to clarify, he's not outright telling you that if you if your eye is causing you to sin, to tear it out and throw it away. He's not actually telling you to do that. Okay, just say he's not he's not encouraging you to uh, dismember yourself. Okay, he's not actually telling you to cut your hand off because your hand is making you sin. Okay, that's not what he's saying. It's a figure of speech. He's basically saying, like, here's an example. Um, if drinking makes you want to continue drinking, then quit drinking. Um, if watching porn makes you do that, quit watching it. Okay, he's basically telling you to quit doing whatever it is that's making you continue sitting. Um, that's kind of what it is. He's bringing it back to... The actual the root of the sin itself so like I said uh, originally like I said I haven't had anything to drink since yet since the beginning of this year uh, I know how I am when I drink and I continue drinking after that it's not it's I can't just have one one sip okay so if it if it causes you to continue doing so it's basically saying just quit doing it just get rid of it okay um, all right, so uh, then he goes into the divorce part, which is kind of which is kind of connected hand in hand with the uh, lustful part. It says, uh, "Whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce." Now, originally that was from Deuteronomy uh, 24:1. Okay, originally it, it originally I was saying that if you if you divorce a woman, it doesn't really matter for what reason. You just give her a certification of divorce, and you're just separate. 
But now, Jesus is saying, everyone who divorces a wife except on the grounds of sexual immorality makes her commit adultery, and then whoever marries that that uh, divorced woman is committing adultery. So unless unless your partner has cheated on you or slept with someone else or done something really messed around with someone else, uh, there should be no reason to divorce someone. Okay. Uh, so sexual morality is basically meaning uncleanliness. Okay. Uh, and he's the reason why he's saying this is because he's trying to focus on the cruelty of women. Okay. Back then, you can marry, you can divorce a woman for whatever reason. It doesn't matter what the what the case is. You can divorce her because she couldn't bear kids. You could you can divorce her because she wasn't pretty enough. Uh, you can divorce her because you fell out of love with her, or whatever the case is. And now Jesus is saying, hey, you can't. If you if you divorce her, you're going to commit adultery. Okay, um, because there's only should be one reason why you should divorce someone, and that's based on them being uh, sexual immorality. Okay, so either he or she cheated on you, uh, he or she did something, like I said, sexual morality, uncleanliness. Other than that, there should not be a reason to divorce someone. Okay. Um, then it said, then it goes on to oaths. It says you should not swore falsely, uh, but shall perform to the Lord. Okay. Uh, let's see, what did, I, I thought I could, I could just want to have something on that. Maybe I don't. Well, either way, basically it's saying, uh, so the scribes and the Pharisees had twisted the whole, you swore falsely part, okay, they twisted it. Um, uh, and there's an example in Exodus 27 of them doing so, or, 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 or it, them just give an example to the fact that they twisted it. Uh, and now Jesus is saying, "Don't take oaths at all, because he doesn't want this. He doesn't want to be twisted." Okay, so you don't swear by heaven, uh, because it is God's throne. You don't swear by earth, because it is footstool, because He created it, and you don't swear by, by Jerusalem, because it's where Jesus was born. Uh, so He's basically reminding us that God is part of every oath, and your oath must be honored, which is why He's saying, "Don't do it." Okay. Um, uh, let what you say be simply yes or no, and that is done. Okay, so he is basically demonstrating that there's enough weight in your character alone to confirm your words. And if if you if you can't do that, then if you're having to resort to an oath, that means there's something wrong with your character. That means your your character is not holding enough weight to uh, hold your words. All right. Re uh, retaliation. Now, I have notes on this one. Okay. It says, uh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And that is from Exodus 21 24. He uh, says, Do not resist one who is evil, but if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you, for you take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. Um, now, Jesus is showing that it now extends into the principle of accepting uh, certain evils against oneself taken. Okay, let's meet it. Alright, so when a person's insult slaps us, we want to give back what they gave us plus more. Jesus said we should patiently bear such insults and offenses and not resist one evil person who insults us this way. Instead, we trust God to defend us. In um, verse, verse 40 here, where it says the uh, take your clinic, let him all have your cloak, originally under the law of Moses, the outer cloak could not be taken from someone. And that was from, again, Exodus 22, 26, and then in, also in Deuteronomy 24, 13. But Jesus is now saying the complete opposite. If he takes your, uh, your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. Uh, there's another one in verse 41 where he says, if someone forces you to go one mile, go two miles with him. Um, it says here, at the time, Judea was under Roman military occupation, and under law, any Roman soldier could command a Jew to carry his soldier's pack for one mile, but only one mile. Now, Jesus is here saying, he's basically saying, go beyond the one mile and give another mile out of a free choice of love. 
Okay, um... And then I just got more verse from that. Alright, and then it says, into uh, 43, what it says, love your enemy, or love your neighbor, hate your enemy, and that's from Leviticus 19:18. But now Jesus is saying, uh, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, or basically, love your neighbor as you love your enemy. Basically, just um, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for He makes His uh, sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and unjust. Okay, uh, now at this point, Jesus is reminding us that in uh, that in a sense, God means it. All people are our neighbors, uh, even our enemies, and we must pray or love our enemies. So He's basically saying that no matter what, this person might be your enemy, or they might hate you, but us as Christians, we're called to love them because, regardless, they're still our they're still our neighbor in a sense. Okay. Um. Oh, and I forgot the part. Uh, it says, "What says? Give to the one." Uh, it says, "Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you." In forty-two, it says, uh, "The only limit to this kind of sacrifice is the limit that love itself will impose. It isn't loving to give in to someone's manipulation without our transform transforming it into a free act of love." It isn't always loving to uh, give, uh, give or to not resist. Okay. All right. Uh, going on into uh, forty-six here, where it says, uh, "For you, for, for if you love those who love you, what reward do you have?" Okay. Um, Jesus taught the character of his of the, of the citizens of his kingdom. We should expect that character to be different from the character seen in the world. So, for example, Christians have the Spirit of God dwelling within them. They have a better future than others do. They have a power that others do not have. They can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. Okay, so basically he's trying to teach the, the character of the citizens of his kingdom. He's trying to teach them how we are, how we're going to be, how, how, how we're supposed to be. Um, and we should uh, expect that character to be different from the character seen in the world because they're not of, they're not part of God's world. They're not, I mean, the world is of the world. Okay, there's a verse many times. I cannot talk to him. We are called to be of God, not of the world. That's what I'm trying to say. So, our character as Christians and as God's disciples are going to be different than someone who's not, someone who's of the world. And that's what we're trying to say. There you go. Okay. So we should be expecting that their character is going to be different than our character. Okay. Uh, and that's what he's pointing out. Like do the tax collectors do the same. Uh, do even the Gentiles do the same? Uh, and then he shows, and he's basically saying, "Therefore, I must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect." Okay. And at this point, he says, "Jesus was primarily seeking to show what God requires of the Christian in his daily life." Okay. Uh, his primary intent was to say, "If you want to be righteous by the law, you must keep the whole law, internally and externally. That is, you must be perfect." Now, obviously, we can't be perfect because there's no such thing as perfect. We're not God. Um, so we can only be as perfect as we possibly can be in His eyesight. Okay? Obviously, God created us all. Okay? He created us exactly how we're meant to be. He knows everything. So in His eyesight, we are... We're not perfect, obviously, like I said, but we are perfect in His eyes because... He made us the way we, exactly as we are. So, by that standard, we just have to follow the law and keep them internally and externally. Uh, and by doing that, and by trying as best as we possibly can to follow Him and rely on God and relying on Jesus and devoting our whole entire life to Him, we are perfect or 
as best as we possibly can to the extent of God's definition. Um, our definition of perfect would be exactly how God is, but since we're not up to that standard, uh, God's definition is different than ours. So we just have to be perfect in His eyes, not ours. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know and I will try to explain it a little better. Um, so at this point, basically he's just saying God is showing love towards his enemy by sending rain and on the just and unjust and he's telling us that we need to um, be better. We need to follow the laws that we're supposed to be doing. Like Here's the first one. Thing. It's like, what do you do more than the sinner? We should regard um, regard it as no matter of virtue if we merely return the love that is given to us. Um, if you only greet if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Okay, so basically, he's trying to tell us that we need to be more loving, more accepting, more. Not following the old commandments, okay? Because the old commandments are telling you that you're supposed to hate your enemy. Your old commandments are telling you, telling you that you're supposed to uh, not swear at all. You're, you're, it's he's trying to steer away from the old commandments and trying to, in a sense, redefine them to the new commandment here. As I'm probably really explaining that all wrong. Um, but yes anyways that is the end of chapter 5 and I'm really hoping I explain that to the point where you guys can understand it uh, like I said if you guys don't understand some things of it let me know in the description below and I will try and do uh, a short and explain a little better um, I'm not the very best explaining complicated things like this I, especially when it's, I, I, I can understand in my head, I know what I'm trying to say, I'm just trying to get it out of the words is difficult. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys marinate on this. Uh, coming up this week, I do have, Nick will obviously be in school, um, but this coming Thursday I will be doing uh, another parent video of like cartoons. And just trying to just get kind of pinpointing like what kind of cartoons I let my kid watch, what kind of cartoons I don't think is, a, is appropriate for him to watch, etc. Make kind of a little more fun. Uh, oh yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and go. Next week is the next party Genesis. I think Genesis 29. Oh yes. So guys, hit the like button, share button, subscribe. If you guys have any comments, let me in the description below. Uh, don't forget to follow my uh, Instagram account because I am posting um, uh, videos. I'm, I'm, I'm posting updates on my Instagram account. And of course, hit the bell button to get notifications. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.